All right, fans of music, welcome back. It is I, Dave, the Real Music Observer, observing real music in real time for real people, just like you right there, and uh, yours truly right here. Guitar player Dwayne Bailey was completely left out of the Chicago documentary, and it's always irked me you know, they talk about Chris Pinnock, they talk about uh, Donnie Dacus, uh, obviously they're talking a lot about Terry Kath, and they even talk about Keith Howland, but they don't ever mention Dwayne Bailey. Uh, here's a guy who uh, played in uh, Bob Seger's Silver Bullet Band and uh, was a hired gun probably for a while before that. Uh, came to Chicago through a relationship with Jason Sheff and was the perfect guitar player for the band in the 1980s and into the early 90s. Um, and people have asked me, you know, why did he quit? Why did he leave? Uh, was he fired? Uh, there's very little info on uh, what happened to Dwayne Bailey. Closest I can get to anything substantive is when the Stone of Sisyphus album was shelved by a very angry Warner Brothers who wanted them to basically go back uh, in the studio and write some ballads. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, what's my opinion of this album? Uh, it wasn't really worth the wait. I'll just be, you know, here's, here's why. Uh, you've got Robert Lamb doing a rap song on there. Uh, you've got some melodies that are half complete. You do have some moments on there that I think had lots of potential. I think the title track from the album is decent. I think uh, Jason Sheff's ode to his dad, who used to play bass for Elvis Presley, a uh, pretty cool gig there. Um, there are some moments on it, but for the most part, if I were the label, knowing what this band needed to do to stay relevant. This album, quite honestly, was kind of like the end of Chicago as far as charting uh, on the top 40. Now, of course, the music scene had already begun to spiral downward, so they probably figured, hey, we're not going to get on the radio anyway. Let's just do what we want to do. And if you watch various other interviews and documentaries and things like that, you'll find out that the band just rebelled against the label and did what they wanted to do. In that whole process, Dwayne Bailey played a huge role in arranging and writing and doing things on that album. And when that album was shelved, I think his reaction was, well, that's it for me, I'm done. You know, uh, and look, why I like, I love Dwayne Bailey. I think he's my favorite guitar player who's ever been in Chicago. And here's why. He just electrified audiences. Um, I think there was a video, I think it's still up on YouTube, where uh, Chicago goes to like Budokan or somewhere like that over in Asia. And it's a fantastic live show. Jason Sheff and Bill Champlin are killing it at the time. Uh, and. Dwayne Bailey on guitar solos is just, he's the most intense guy they've had since Terry Kath. He's different, which I like, because rather than being compared to Kath, uh, Dwayne Bailey more or less became this sort of 80s, almost hard rock, heavy metal guitar hero who's in Chicago, who's just putting on a pyrotechnics display with his guitar work. I love watching footage with Dwayne and Bill and Jason in the band. Uh, it, you know, Chicago purists are obviously thinking to themselves, these guys aren't really Chicago and so forth, but for fans of the 80s band, uh, and you know, they were still playing all the uh, Chicago 16 and 17 material, uh, and when they would go back and do something from the 70s, I mean, Bailey put his stamp on those songs and really brought them to a different place. So it's just kind of curious. They do this documentary and pretty much everybody is in this documentary. They don't leave, you know, maybe they leave some of the percussionists out and so forth, but they didn't talk about 
Bailey coming on board. They didn't talk about why he left. They, they didn't mention anything about how great he was on guitar. You know, they documented uh, Triss and Bowden and the whole Danny Serafin thing, but nothing on Dwayne Bailey, which I think is a huge mistake. Uh, he needs to be recognized because he, he's my second favorite guitar player ever in Chicago. Apologies to Keith Howland. I think Keith has done a, a terrific job of holding down the fort. But if you were to rate them by my standards, uh, it would be Calf, Bailey, Howland, Panic, and Dacus probably would be last. Although I think uh, Donnie Dacus gets kind of a bad rap. He had a completely different, much breezier style, and the band was writing material that was like that. And you really didn't get the full Donnie Dacus. And I think... Uh, you know, his work ethic apparently had some issues according to the documentary, but I'd love somebody else to do another documentary. Maybe Danny Serafin can put one together because I'd like to hear the other side of this. This was produced by like the cousin or nephew of Lou Pardini, and it had kind of like this inside baseball thing going on where, you know, Bill Champlin thought he was the greatest, and so Jimmy Panko's like, bye, you know, yeah. I guess they did fire him, apparently. Uh, that's not how it was thrown out there when it happened. Uh, basically, Bill said he wanted to move on to make some music and so forth. And, um, you know, he, he's been in interviews recently saying that I think uh, the guys felt as though I was kind of like this mistake that shouldn't have happened. And that's pretty sad. I mean, Bill Champlin is a great artist. And uh, it's just too bad that these guys you know, can't get over these egos that they have. All right, I'm done with this video. Dwayne Bailey, if you're out there, buddy, send me a message. Tell me the truth. Tell me what happened. Were you just sick and tired or was there some other mysterious thing that happened behind the scenes? Because I think there's a lot of that going on in Chicago. All right, see you soon, everybody.